Great, Louisa, take it away, let's get started. Okay, great. Well, welcome everybody. This is the inaugural webinar hosted by MA Creative, which is the curatorial agency side of MA Group uh, and Management Artists. A moving image and content to discuss the fact that experiential is not dead. No way, it's just evolving. Um, so in our lineup of fantastic speakers, we have Quinn Mai, who is the CEO of Moving Image and Content, Anthony Cosbito, whose name I find very hard to pronounce, okay. uh, who is head of strategy at Moving Image and Content, and uh, my new wonderful talent also at MA, Sam Bumper, who I've known for a very long time uh, and now have the privilege of working with him. He is the founder of a multi-sensory experience design agency, Bumpus and Par. Guys, take it away. Great. Um, and just so you, everyone knows, we will be circulating a copy of this presentation um, as well as a video for anyone who wants it. Okay, so let's talk about the evolution of experiential. Um, oh, how much has changed in just six months. Um, it's no surprise, you know, event marketing budgets have been slashed this year, down 13 billion. But interestingly, it's projected to actually grow 6% in 2021, um, which is only 2% less than what it was in 2019, because there's going to be such a pent up demand to actually see people in the flesh and actually be um, in person again. Um, we all know that in the past, events were all about being in person and indoors. Now it's all about virtual. So what does the future hold? What's going to be the future of experiential? Um, and we really actually think that this shift to what we call hybrid events, this sort of like in-person, outdoor, and virtual will forever exchange, change experiential, even post-vaccine, because we've really, in the last few months, changed our behavior, changed our mindset, and really changed how we want to experience life virtually and in real life. So if you rewind back to 9-11, right, when, especially in the U.S., when we had, you know, the 9-11 catastrophe, we really wanted to connect with people. We wanted to feel close to our friends and family. And that really birthed social media. That was the beginning of Friendster and MySpace, which then brought on um, Facebook and all the other social media apps. Um, and that behavior changed us forever. During the last recession, when everyone had very slim pocketbooks, we started to think about ownership in a different way. We started thinking, well, you know what? It's better to rent and borrow than buy. And things like Uber, Airbnb, and Rent the Runway um, started to come into existence. And now what's happening with COVID-19, another shocking um, you know, moment for society now globally, it's really redefining what experiences mean. What does experiential really mean now? Is it really just about being out, not in the same case? And what we're seeing that being at home and experiencing at home is actually pretty great in some regards. Yes, we miss the people, we miss the drinks, but we also don't miss having to dress up, to commute, to fight the subway or to drive um, after a few drinks. Um, and we're learning how to be our maybe sometimes more authentic selves online because we have a sense of freedom, a little bit of mystery of coming to a party by ourselves or coming in and being, you know, dancing and really experiencing things in a new way. So what we really predict is this hybrid model, right? of in-person, outdoor, as well as virtual coming together so that experiences will have both an online and an offline expression that really do merge and coalesce together. Um, with that, I'll pass it on to Anthony who will talk about, oh, sorry, I went a little bit too fast. I forgot to say that we need to think about what brands need to do in experiential. Um, this will be on the blooper reel, guys, for sure. Um, but for brands, it's really imperative to stay with experiential for a couple of reasons. One is uh, relevance. Brands need to stay relevant in culture. Brands need to say that they're signaling to their customers that we're cool and we know what's going on. Um, another big case for experiential right now, even in the midst of um, some lockdowns and you know stay at home orders is still engagement because most brands engagement rates on Instagram, for example, is only 1% and consumers actually only spend about one second on an Instagram post, which is really depressing. So brands need to figure out ways to engage the customers in a more meaningful way, how to connect with them. And really importantly, experiential, whether virtual in real life, provides amplification, not just from a PR perspective, but of a user perspective, word of mouth. People come to your events, 
virtual or real, and they create user-generated content. They post about it, they share it with their friends, they have excitement. So they really come to these things with an open mind to then share with their friends and share their experiences with others. And that still is the most important form of marketing, which is word of mouth. Um, and with that, Anthony, for real this time, I'm gonna pass it to you. Great, thanks, Ben. So, you know, the shift that we're looking at going from real world to virtual is creating these, these new realities, these new emerging realities. And we're gonna take a look at five of those right now. And they're really shaping what the future of virtual is really all about. Uh, the first of which is a shopping festival. And a shopping festival, typically they're one to two day uh, events with talks, programming, uh, and live stream shopping, of course. And these are popularized in China initially, and they're starting to catch on here in the States. And since the pandemic hit, they've only just accelerated. So a good example of this is, uh, is Network, and it's a video shopping platform for Gen Z. I think early days, MTV, QVC kind of a thing. And uh, they recently held a shopping festival, a two-day shopping festival called Transfer, uh, where they had uh, 30 product drops, uh, panels, discussions. Uh, and it was really interesting for people who were in the streetwear community, so much so that they all got together from all over the world, had record attendance, and they, they almost sold out of almost all the products. So it created this community aspect, and this is what shopping festivals are great at. It combines community and commerce in a way that delivers ROI to an experience. And we're gonna see a lot more of these in, in the next year or two, and one of the industries that's really gonna start picking up is beauty, so look for these more uh, in, in the beauty space as we go forward. Something else that's interesting is mixed reality. And this is where we add a visual layer to a live experience, uh, and it allows for viewer participation and engagement in ways that you just can't get with a, with a real world experience or something that you're just watching on television. An example here is The weekend. Uh, they did a broadcast live on TikTok where attendees could interact, add comments, and it was really interesting because you could add a comment on screen and all of a sudden it would appear on stage in, in bright lights next to The weekend. So you had this really interesting participation, again, that you couldn't really get in any, any other way. So they did this on stage. They also did it where um, you could provide a comment and send some love when you send some, some likes and some hearts, all these fireworks go off on stage and your name appears next to it. So these really interesting engaging experiences that people remember, that they talk about. And of course, you see your name up in bright lights with the weekend, you're gonna take a screenshot of it, right? You're gonna, you're gonna share it. So you do have some of that amplification that Quinn was talking about. Next up is immersive. Uh, this is 306 degree navigation experiences, similar to a video game. Some people call this virtual reality, not so much virtual reality, it's more VR light, if anything. But it was a really good uh, example of this for Fenty Skin. They did a virtual house party for, the, for launching uh, Fenty Skin. And people could enter the house, they could walk around, they can go to the gardens, they can go to the dance floor, because of course at the dance floor, it's Rihanna's house. So Rihanna was there live, interacting with people. She did some interviews with people. People were taking screenshots. So it created this amazing experience where people were actually, actually had the chance to meet Rihanna and engage with Rihanna in a way that they never would have been able to do before. So you can imagine what that did for the brand. You know, and there were actually some technical glitches that got in the way, but at the end of the day, fans didn't matter, guests didn't matter because there were all these cool, interesting, interesting things to do and they got to interact with, uh, with, with Rihanna. So you have to really kind of take, take a chance at some of these events, but at the end of the day, um, you know, it's, it's all brand new. So they're new experiences that we're all, we're all working through. The metaverse is also fascinating, right? And this is something that people consider the next version of the internet. And essentially it's a persistent digital environment we can come back to over time, collaborate with other people and do things. Um, Animal Crossing, of course, is a good example of this. Fortnite is a good example of this. I was really impressed with it, Tatcha did. Tatcha is a Japanese beauty brand and they launched a product called Rice Wash. So they really wanted to get the concept out there that this was a Japanese brand, a Japanese product. They wanted to talk about the heritage. So they created their own virtual island in Animal Crossing and they had you know, Japanese gardens, a Zen meditation and, and all these different things that you could do. They had rice patties where you can go and learn about the ingredients and the provenance of the product and the history of everything that was involved with the product. So it was really, really smart the way that they did it uh, because it brought the brand forward. Now you don't wanna do an Animal Crossing event just to do an Animal Crossing event, but here it was really powerful because it took the brand essence where the brand messaging was, the product messaging, and brought it through into that digital experience. So instead of getting in the way, it really amplified the messaging quite nicely. Next up is hybrid. And this is what Quinn was talking about before. This is, this is where things are going, especially in, in the short term, where you're going to have online aspects, you're gonna have offline aspects. And this is what Freeze is doing for their London October event, where they have online viewing rooms set up. And this has become pretty popular in the art world for different exhibitions. You could see the art, 
you could also interact with other people, talk about the art with other people. Um, and then they spread out events across London, across the city, across different parks. So you have this distributed experience, again, that you can't get in any other way. So it opened up Freeze in a way that people from all over the world could attend. So smaller physical experiences distributed throughout the city, but an overall much larger attendance rate. So for, for brand, from a brand perspective, the reach on that is pretty incredible. Pretty interesting to see where these things are going. Next up is online live. And this is what we all know and love as our uh, typical Zoom experience. But when you create a, an event in Zoom, the last thing you wanted to do is look like Zoom, right? So that was our challenge. That was our mission for, uh, for Mark Jacobs Fragrances, the virtual launch for Perfect. Uh, we essentially wanted to create people, uh, create an experience with rooms within rooms and take people on a journey across 10 different experiences. And the first thing we wanted to do there was really put the guests in control through a choose your own adventure narrative. So we created this arrivals room where people come into the room, they could watch a product video, get situated, and then choose from any number of these uh, 10 different experiences to explore. And they all had a unique element to it that had a, a participation aspect to it. So we're gonna take a quick look at the video. I hope this video works without any glitches and then we'll talk about it a little bit on the other side. <laughs> not perfect in the sense of perfectionism, one that's encouraging self-love and individuality. Bring your most perfect self. Action. Perfect. 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 So beautiful. Perfect. 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 Ready? And I'm perfect as I am. Woo! You have such a wonderful demeanor about you. Oh my god, I love that. Overall, perfect. I don't understand how you do it. It looks amazing. It's perfect. You've created a scent like it wraps itself around you. It's a signature scent. Being a black plus size model in fashion, it takes radical self-love to be curious. Life is too short to not be your fullest, happiest self. I guess accepting yourself the way you are and all your flaws and rocking that. This beauty, which I just find inspiring, which is meeting people who are so well with themselves. Come on, man, I can. That's great. I get like one arm up on the couch for me. Like, that's fabulous. It's gorgeous. Oh, that's amazing. I feel good about this story. I can let this go and I can let people react to it. That inexplicable feeling of just feeling perfect. Great. So you can see there were uh, lots of happy moments in there, lots of singing, lots of dancing. And that was really our goal, right? To create these human moments, these, these opportunities for participation, personal recognition. These, these moonshot moments are, are really what drives virtual uh, ROI, you know, because people remember those experiences. They talk about it afterwards. They, they share different pieces from it. So just to give you a tour, just a, a couple of call outs. In the upper left, that was something where the, the Bumbies wrote personalized poems about the guests that they could take home. Uh, and then next to that, uh, we had Jackie Blue, who did the illustrations for the, for the packaging for Perfect. She drew live portraits of the guests. And that was one of the most popular you know, events. People got to take that home as well. There was a dance party on the lower left with, with Shangela of, of uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. And then we had uh, Kim Petras in the, in the lower right giving a private concert. The set was developed specifically for this event. Uh, and there was a chat functionality in there so people could talk with each other, they could interact with Kim. So it was amazing to see how excited people got when they got to actually communicate you know, with, with the people on screen. And then when they got sent something, they shared it out across social. So it's really exciting to see where things were you know, a year ago and where they're at now and where they're evolving to. Um, so for that, I'd like to hand it over to Sam Bompas, who's going to share a little bit about uh, his ins insights around uh, what's experiential and what's possible with it. Thank you so, so much. And very excellent to be seeing everyone. Um, I'm actually here um, in my studio, which is why I've got a six and a half meter organ behind me. It's not my house. Um, anyway, I was going to talk a little bit about the challenges, the opportunities in creating new experiences for this time of ours. Um, I was going to tell you what I'm excited about in terms of holidays and um, hopefully give you all our secrets in a swift 10 minutes or so. 
Um, but I think in terms of opportunities, one of the things that we've found that's really clear, and we're coming from a background of both experiences, experientially in the real world and digital platforms, is we've really found that um, we're just getting the most unprecedented access to sites in a way that we probably never will, I, or I hope we never will for a very long time. So at the moment, um, we've got sites around the world that are, are things like 200,000 square foot um, uh, city centre sites. I've got pontoons in the middle of the Thames. I've got entire opera houses that you can put stuff on the stage of. These are places you never get to go and do stuff. And we've got uh, incredible cultural centres that normally they're programming two years out. Now if you come and they're starting to open up around the world, if you can give them something new, um, then they're very, very keen to have conversations. Um, and of course, many audiences, I mean, like myself, are just desperate to do new, interesting, imaginative things, it's like some of the examples that you've been seeing over the course of this video. And uh, if you can do that with your brand, people will be incredibly grateful. Part of the challenge, of course, is um, you know, why would you be signing off some budget now? You don't quite know what's going to be happening in the future. It's a difficult sign off to make. Um, what I would say is the way that we're approaching experiential is that experiential is something that doesn't just need to grow your audience. It doesn't just need to grow your fame, your reputation, or get you a new promotion. Um, if it's approached in the right way, it can be a huge revenue driver. So a lot of the experiential that we deliver now, um, there's a pay on the in, and if you make it, if it's popular enough, and it's popular if it's good, um, then you can generate a lot of uh, revenue for your brand as well. And that's not just on selling your product um, and consumers' long-term lifestyle as well. Um, so I think this, this screen popped up a little bit early, so sorry if it seemed weird and absurd. Um, it's, uh, this, is, this is an example, really, of, of something we've been doing. We've been actually live with experiences um, since before, relating to COVID since before lockdown. And this is a show that we did called The Fountain of Hygiene. And back in March, um, you know, a lot of our world is about when people come together in the real world. We thought, how can we get people out in the public realm, feeling safe, being safe, interacting with one another? So we put together a design competition raising money for the British Red Cross on designing the future of hand sanitizer, which I'm sure um, we've spoken, well, you've had a lot more experience now than you have uh, uh, for the rest of your life, probably. And uh, we're very, we're, we're lucky, as um, hadn't ever spoken to them before, but is able to enlist the design museum to be a cultural institution that was part of that. And it was interesting because we launched that before the world, well, and our, our, our clients in, in APAC had already gone into lockdown, but um, before Europe had gone into lockdown, and the aim was to keep people in the public realm. The, the, the project then unfolded um, as people were in lockdown. As a result, we got terrific engagement. Um, people were so keen on a happy story. So we had 180 entries in 33 countries around the world. Um, and uh, what we're able to do, because then no one could see it, is we're able to pivot that to being a digital platform. Um, the digital platform got um, one of the highest engagements we've ever had. And then as we came out of lockdown, we're then able to put on a show in the Design Museum, which has had, so far, had 12,000 visitors. Um, and uh, it was a, there's a moment, there's in the bottom, in the bottom corner, you can see one of the fountains, there's a little tongue fountain there, that's sort of, sort of frothing away. And um, the day after we went live on the, the, the 2nd of August, I got a call from the uh, Ops Director of the Design Museum saying, your fountains are leaking all over the terrazzo floor. I was like, oh my God. And I was like, yes, this is it. We're live doing live experiences again. But I think the purpose with that was, it doesn't matter what your, what your level of comfortableness is within the public realm. Um, whether you're someone that's go, seeking to go out in real life, see people interacting, with one another, you can go to the live experience, but also it's backed up by that comprehensive uh, platform. And that, that's now actually gonna tour to um, Hong Kong and Australia. And I think the secret with that though was um, keeping all the build costs very, very low and, all the, or, and just DIYing it. So I think um, we managed to get a, a, an earned media reach of um, 424 million 
um, on uh, a spend of 2K. I think the total project budget was about 4,000 pounds GBP. Now, your agencies probably don't want to hear that at all. Um, and if you ever commission us, we'd, we'd love to work with bigger budgets, but it's incredible actually now in terms of the opportunities, what you can make happen on relatively modest budgets because people are up for doing stuff. You're getting the access to the talent to make some stuff. So I was going to um, very quickly, so we do lots and lots of trend forecasting. Um, we spend a lot of our time looking at what other people are doing now and I make sure that everyone in the studio is studying like a hawk, whatever's happening in the world. Um, and then remind them that we cannot do anything like that because it's already happened. We need to make up something totally new. And um, so rather than tell you about things that we're looking at, um, I want to talk about the things that we're excited about for the holidays. Now, holidays, big time for a lot of brands. Many brands are selling 40% of, 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 um, of their goods or making 40% of their profit then. Um, it's going to be a very different one this year. I know that because by this time last year, I had written 17 Christmas grotto experiences. I was sick to the back teeth of writing grotto experiences, but now they're only just starting to come in. People are coming very, very late to this. Um, and what we're seeing is, is you really need to balance up that, that sense over the holidays of optimism, hope that uh, 2021 is going to be a very different scenario that sense that people want to get out, they want novel experiences, they want to see people, with the sense of anxiety that, and I think it takes uh, 21 days to form new life-changing habits. I think we've been do all been doing this a lot longer than 21 days. Um, and so there might, so how can you create experiences um, that allow people to engage with them even if they're not confident going out into the public realm or are not able, for whatever reason? And so I'm going to rush, rush through these. So um, if you're coming to the end of your lunch, you can, you can hit your rest of your meeting. But in each case, I've taken the sorts of beats, the sorts of things that we'd all love doing in holidays and looked at how you can do them in a way that exists in experiential, but also can exist digitally. So this is your heartbeat is mine. A lot of buildings that are lit up, you can go in and very cheaply change the Pharos lighting system, which is how they're lit and then have that entire building pulsate in time with people's heartbeats. It's bringing communities back together. It's also relatively easy to synchronize two people's heartbeats, whether they're together or whether they're separate. And this was found out by a scientist, Joe Devlin, who was working on what happens to your heart as you're watching a musical. And he found out that all those people watching a musical, their heartbeats synchronize. And so if you sing with someone or do a number of different activities with someone, and that could be in the same room or that could be across a digital platform, your heartbeats will synchronize. Perhaps our heartbeats are synchronizing even now. Go on to the next slide. So sentient and plant chanted forest. How can you make Christmas trees exciting again? Now, I mean, there've been years and years that we've seen of, of a, 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 a sort of arms race of ever larger, ever more magnificent Christmas trees. Could we do Christmas in Christmas trees with much smaller, um, more modest trees without the investment, without the logistics, but making them interesting for the people that are around them and the people that are not there? So we're working on um, basically making mounted Christmas trees that you've all, you've all seen those uh, fairy tales where you go into the enchanted wood and it seems like the Christmas trees are moving. In this case, the Christmas trees are moving, but they're following you around and directed for people that are either in an in a antechamber or online interacting with the audience. Wouldn't you want to sit there and, and actually that sounds really creepy, follow someone around with a Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of intrigued though to see what happens. I don't but mind, this, I don't mind Sam. <laughs> but this, but this, this um, part of it allows you to do this sort of, socially distanced festivities as well. So go on to the next one. So every five minutes, a carousel of convivialities. So, you know, at our agency and hopefully all of the people that you work with, health and safety is taken very, very seriously. In fact, so much so at Bompson Pod that some of our first installations, we flooded a building with cognac and then you boated across this four tons of cognac before having a drink. And this is one of the, one of the very first things we did. And, and we're like, the only way you could do this legally was by treating the whole thing as a food safe environment 
So to go in there, everyone scrubbed up. They had a very detailed washing their hands. They put on beard snoots. They put on hair nets. They put on aprons. They put on shoe covers. So all this PPE. And for them, that was so exciting. They were taking pictures of one another, sharing them all because um, this was so novel. And I wish PPE was uh, considered that novel now. But you know, behind this, there's an industrial kitchen. We spend a lot of our time looking at what if we're going to cook how are you not poison people? As creatives, we're now coming to this with a much longer list of our PPE checklist. But as a creative, you can still come up with a way to engage with it. So in the UK at the moment, you can only have groups of six people. For Christmas, so that you can have your office party and get together, but only in your groups of six, we're creating the carousel of conviviality. And just looking for some brand partners at the moment. Um, and there will be two revolves nested within one another, not unlike the carousel bar in New Orleans. And it will mean that you're in a snug and every five minutes, your table, your group shifts to the right or left and you're confronted with a new group of people. And so it means that in 60 minutes, you will have spoken to more people than you've probably chatted to in, in, in live, seeing them in the flesh um, than over the last six months. And also, there's totally different lighting change, lighting scenario. Um, it's very jolly. And then beyond belief, one of the things that we're really interested in is the power of imagination. So what are all the creative impetuses that come about um, through this, this very, very different year? I feel more creative than before. With this, this is, we've spent a long time working on trying to make snow globes flavored. So you go inside the globe, um, it snows down on you. We've, we've, we've actually been doing some work with um, the, the leading snows experts to make flavoured snows in the high mountains of uh, South Korea. They are able to import their kit around the world this year, we have checked. Um, and you go in, and the good thing is, because the whole, whole area is chilled, you don't want to dwell very long. So you're able to get a very uh, large throughput of people to this equivalent of what might be a Santa's Grotto experience because they're not hanging about because you're down at minus, well, zero degrees when you're in there. You get an unprecedented world first as you turn your mouth to the sky and your family does and you taste the snow and it tastes absolutely delicious. And um, then within it is built in the opportunity for relatives, friends, family who might want to see you. And like normally when you go to a Christmas Grotto experience, you never have remote access. This year, because of what everything's happening, been pushed to make those hybrid experiences. And I think that's something that will persist post vaccine. So I think there's some really positive things to come from it all. Finally, um, a wish cannon. So in Britain, we always look to having a white Christmas. That's because it's very, very rare that we do in London. In fact, um, if you want to have a, a, a very long odds bet, there's a standard, standard form of the bookies that you can go and put on, put on some money on having a white Christmas. Um, but we've been working on, on uh, uh, to using toroidal vortex cannons so these are otherwise known as hail cannons to stop it uh stop it hailing and ruining crops in california but what they do is they send a powerful burst of energy up into the sky and that will knock any moisture that's there into the sky out of the sky and if it's between two degrees and minus two degrees centigrade that can then come down in the form of snow and that can be powered with your Christmas wishes and hopes for the new year. So that can be done online, in real life, and hopefully you can have a beautiful white Christmas in an ever more magical 2021. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, we will be sending this deck to everyone um, as well as a video recording. Thank you and have a great, great day.